Hello everyone, welcome back. In the last video, we talked about some basic matrix properties and orthogonal matrices as well. Um, in this video, we're gonna be talking about norms. Now, before I go into definitions, let me briefly say that the whole purpose of a norm is to somehow calculate the length of a vector in different ways. So, what do I mean by that? Well, let's say we have a vector x. This is our vector x. And let's say, just for simplicity, that it only has two elements inside of it, x1 and x2. Be in mind, everything I'm gonna say in this particular video lecture can be generalized to cover bigger matrices of Rn, but let's just say for simplicity that x is in R2, R2, just for this video. Uh, this R2 means that it's just got a dimension of two. There's only two elements inside. Okay, so everything I'm gonna be covering is just uh, the simplified case, but it does generalize. The first type of norm I want to talk about is something called a two-norm. Two-norm. What is a two-norm? Well, the two-norm is defined by the following. The two-norm of x is written as this kind of like double line here, and then the x in the middle with a subscript two here. So to note it's the two-norm. And it's defined as the um, positive square root of all the terms inside of it squared and added together. So x1 squared plus x2 squared. And in principle, if you had an x3 at the bottom, then you'd have a plus x3 squared here as well. Okay, that's what the two norm is defined as. But in order to get a feeling for what this means, I think we should probably plot it over here, or at least a simple example. So let's say we have, let's say we have x1 here, and let's say we have x2 here. And let's cover a fairly simple case where our x vector, our x vector is equal to, um, uh, let's say, 4, 3. Let's say 4, 3. So in that case, we have a vector which looks a little bit like this. That means that this point here is 4, and this point here is 3. That's our vector x right here. Now, as you can probably tell, this formula probably looks really familiar to you. In fact, this is the formula for Pythagoras. And so what you can say is that this two norm is really just the length of this vector here. And if you just follow from Pythagoras, um, the square root of four squared plus three squared is um, five. So that means that the two norm, the two norm, the two norm of our vector x is just the square root of four squared plus three squared, which is the square root of 25, which is five. And that's the length that is the length of this vector here. Okay, so that's a graphical way you can kind of measure the length of this vector here. Let's talk about a different type of norm. In fact, let's generalize this further. Let's talk about the, what I'll call the p-norm. And really it's a generalization of the two-norm. And it's written the same way. It's written with this double line here, and then x, and then double line and a subscript p. And it's defined to be, <clears throat> the absolute value of x1 to the power of p plus the absolute value of x2 to the power of p plus the absolute value of x3 to the, value of, to the power of p if we had it, and on and on and on, and then all to the power of 1 over p. That is the definition of the p-norm. And as you can see that in the case of p equals 2, we actually recover this. So this truly is a generalization. Um, so this is, a, this is the most general form of a, of, a, of, a, of a norm you can have. This is the p-norm. Now let's talk about some additional norms. Let's talk about the, um, the one norm. I'll, I'll write it up here. Let's talk about the one norm. One norm. And following the, uh, the definition, that means that x subscript 1, that's the one norm, is just going to be the absolute value of x1 to the power of 1 plus the absolute value of x2 to the power of 1 all to the power of 1. So it's just the sum of the absolute values here. Now can we understand this one norm geographically? Well yeah, of course we can. What is the absolute value of x1? Well it's 4. And what is the absolute value of x2? Well it's 3. So that means that the one norm is going to be equal to the absolute value of 4 plus the absolute value of 3, which is just going to be 7. And graphically, what does that mean? Well, 
it's this length. It's the length if you were to go along here and then up here. It's the sum of the lengths of this triangle here. That's how you can understand it. So this is another way you can kind of you know, subjectively measure the length of this vector. You can just sum up all of its sides like this. OK, now let's talk about another really powerful norm that's sometimes used in different contexts. Let's talk about the infinity norm. Infinity norm. OK, <clears throat> what is the infinity norm? Um, well, it is following this definition. If you put in p is equal to infinity, then clearly the largest value of, of the absolute value of xi that is, that, let me rephrase, the, 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 the biggest one of these terms here will be the one that dominates as p approaches infinity. And so that means that really the other terms won't matter much. So, and, and then that, that p will cancel off with this 1 over p. So really this means that the absolute value of, sorry, the, 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 the infinity norm of x, the infinity norm of x, is just going to be the maximum, the maximum of the absolute value of x1 or the absolute value of x2, like this. That is the infinity norm. OK, and how can we understand the infinity norm here? Well, in this context, once again, let's write it here. The infinity norm is going to be well, what's bigger, the, um, the absolute value of 4 or the absolute value of 3? Well, it's going to be maximum of the absolute value of 4 or the maximum value of 3, and that's going to be equal to 4. OK. And you can see that the infinity norm is just this part here. It's just the largest part. So this is going to be 4, like this. And I didn't write it before, but let me write it in pink. But the sum of these two triangle elements here was indeed 7. 7 like that. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of, uh, of the different types of norms. They're all different ways to measure, you know, in some subjective sense, the length of a vector. OK, um, there's one other thing I wanted to cover, which I briefly covered in a previous video, but I think I should spend a little bit more time on it. I want to talk to you a property of two norms, which is that perhaps you've heard of a dot product before. So x dot x is known as the dot product. And what that means is you've got um, uh, x1, x2 dotted with itself, which is the same thing as x1, x2. This is also, in fact, the same thing as x1, x2 times x1, x2. Because if you do the matrix multiplication, you will indeed get x1 squared plus x2 squared. So this is, in fact, the same thing as x1 squared um, plus x2 squared. Now, why is this important? Well, notice we've got x1 squared plus x2 squared, which is, in fact, the definition of the two norm of x squared. So in other words, I want to say that x transpose x, which is this thing here, this is x transpose x, is the same thing as the two norm of your vector squared. That is a useful um, formula to use, and it is used in some proofs. Okay, I hope that made sense, guys. Um, yeah, we'll continue with the next video. Thanks.